Hi, in this lecture, we are going to implement the knapsack problem together. So we will have two classes, application.java and the knapsack.java. In the knapsack.java, we are going to have several field variables. So private integer num of items. Then we will have the private integer capacity of knapsack. Okay. Then we will have a two-dimensional array of integers for the knapsack table. Then we will have a total benefit. Okay. Then we will have a weights of items, so profit integer weights. And we will have a value, private integer values basically. So what are these one-dimensional arrays? This is what we have been discussing, that we will have the items and we are going to associate the given value to every single item and we are going to assign a weight to every single item. So that's why there's going to be a one-dimensional array for the weights and one-dimensional array for the values accordingly. Okay, in the knapsack constructor, we will get a integer num of items we will get a capacity of knapsack we will have the weights and we will have the values so we just have to assign the number of items is equal to the number of items the capacity of the knapsack is equal to the capacity of the knapsack the weights are equal to the weights and the values is equal to the values accordingly. Of course, we have to instantiate the knapsack table in order to avoid null pointer exceptions. And we will have as many rows as the number of items plus one. And we will have as many columns as the capacity of the knapsack plus one. Why plus one? This is what we have been discussing that as you can see, we have a zero column for the weights and zero column for the items. So that's why we have three items, but there are four rows. We have five kilograms as the capacity of the knapsack, but we will have six columns. So that's why we instantiate it like this. And then we will have a public void solve problem Okay, of course, B. And we just have to iterate through all the items. So I is equal to one. We start with one because we know for certain that there's going to be zeros in the first row as well as in the first column. So we don't have to bother about the first row items and the first column items. We know for certain that it's going to be zero. So I is less than the number of items plus one the i plus plus of course then we have to iterate through all the capacities so integer j is equal to one j is less than the capacity of the knapsack plus one j plus plus okay and then basically we just have to create an integer not taking the given item which is equal to the knapsack table with index i minus one for the rows and uh, w for the column index basically this is for not taking item i so this is the formula we have been discussing we are going to create two integers for not taking the ith item and taking the ith item it is the knapsack table denoted with s i minus 1 for the row index and w for the column index so that's why i minus 1 for the row index and w for the column index okay maybe i'm going to rename it to w just to make sure that we use the notations we have been discussing in a theoretical section and we are going to create an integer for taking item it's equal to zero at the beginning because we have been discussing that if the weights 
with index i is less than or equal than the w, this is when we have to consider taking the item. As you can see, we are only considering s i minus 1, w minus w sub i, if it can fit into the knapsack. Okay. So if the weight is greater than the W, it means that it is not fit into the knapsack, so we don't have to bother about it. But anyways, we have the knapsack table, I minus 1, and W minus the weights with the I index. And of course, we have to get the values. So values I plus knapsack table i minus 1 and the weights accordingly. This is the formula if we take the ith item. After that, basically, we just have to set the knapsack table i and w to be equal to the moth.mox for not taking the item and taking the item, because we would like to find the maximum value. That's why we have to choose that whether to take that given item with index i or not taking the item. Okay. And basically, in the end of the solve method, we are going to say that the total benefit is equal to the knapsack table, last row, and last column. So, capacity of knapsack. Okay, let's save it. Why? This is what we have been discussing as well, that the last row last column index will contain the solution that what's going to be the maximum value we can achieve if we put the optimal items into the given knapsack. Okay, so it's very very straightforward. I mean, it's exactly the same as we have discussed in the theoretical section. As you can see, what's going to be the time complexity, we just have to make two for loops. The for loop is i times the w because we're considering the number of items and the capacity of the knapsack. Okay, the number of items is usually represented with capital N, so N times w is going to be the running time complexity for the knapsack problem. And it's quite intuitive after taking a look at the implementation because these operations can be done in order one constant time complexity we just have to manipulate array indices, and array indices can be manipulated in order one time complexity. This is why we like arrays, the so-called random access feature. So in the next video, we are going to talk about how to decide what items to put into the knapsack and what items can we leave out. Okay, thanks for watching.